Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the specs and features of a product that's brand new to the portable power market, the Jackery Explorer 500. The Jackery Explorer 500 is a new portable power station aimed at providing a modest amount of portable power wherever you need it. In this video, we're going to cover some of the main features, the capacities, ways to recharge the unit, what you can expect to be able to power with the unit, and some considerations to determine if it'll be a good choice for your own personal needs. Now before we get started, I need to be transparent. This is a sponsored post. I have been compensated to make this video and to explain the features of this portable power unit. Jackery saw me as somebody who's able to explain things very well and wanted me to explain their product. I'm not being compensated to mislead you or skirt around pitfalls of the unit. At the end of the video, I'll even give you some criteria about how to determine if this unit will not meet your needs. But we'll get to that when we get to it. So let's get started. What is a portable power station? A portable power station is an all-in-one power unit designed to bring enough power with you to power drones, computers, charge phones, and all kinds of other little small devices. It's typically a battery, an inverter, and a solar charge controller in an all-in-one self-contained box with power outlets of various types and sizes on the outside. Now that we're familiar with the basic premise of the unit, let's get into this box. Inside the box, you're going to find some instructions and paperwork, a zippered pouch with an AC to DC adapter cord, and a 12 volt car adapter charging cord. And finally, the actual Jackery Explorer 500 portable power unit. Now that we know what we're dealing with, let's jump right into talking about what kind of items you can expect this unit to power. What can the Jackery Explorer 500 power? The Explorer 500 comes with three 2.4 amp USB outlets, so it will charge any of your standard USB devices. Inside of the Explorer 500 is a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter capable of handling 1000 watt power surges. This means that the Explorer 500 is capable of handling up to 500 watts of continuous power with some wiggle room for items that may take up more power momentarily. Here's a quick list of common items that are under 500 watts that the Jackery would be able to power or charge. Computers, a one wheel, a fan, DJI Mavic drone batteries, a TV, or a small refrigerator. Now a few items that are going to require too much power for the Jackery Explorer 500 are going to be things like a toaster oven, a blender, an air conditioner, space heaters, electric hot water heaters, or residential size refrigerators. Now, if you're not sure if the device that you're wanting to power will work with the Explorer 500, there's typically a plate on the device that will tell you the wattage. So as long as that number is under 500 watts, you're good to go. Ultimately though, the Explorer 500 has internal breakers that will trip if you try to power something that requires too much power for what the Explorer 500 can handle. The Jackery Explorer 500 also has three 12 volt outlets. One is a cigarette lighter style of outlet and is capable of providing 10 amps and the other two are six millimeter outlets capable of providing seven amps. All three can be used at the same time, but 10 amps is the maximum power output between all of the 12 volt outlets combined. If you're attempting to run 12 volt appliances like lights and fans off of this unit, you could wire in some 10 gauge duplex wire to a cigarette lighter male pigtail. The other end would go to a small fuse block. Then from there, you could hardwire some LED puck lights or even a max air roof fan. Jackery Explorer 500 battery capacity. The Jackery Explorer 500 has a 518 watt hour lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide battery which is just a lithium battery. This is the same chemistry of battery that Tesla uses in their Powerwall units. Since most of you are looking into this info in regards to a camper van setup, a 518 watt hour lithium battery is effectively a 41 amp hour battery at 12.6 volts. The battery in the Explorer 500 has a stated life of 500 cycles, but they state that the life of the battery is just 80%. 
So what that means is, if you completely drain, then recharge the battery every single day, after a year and a half, you'll still have about 32-ish amp hours of battery capacity left in the unit that you'll still be able to use. So actually pretty good in my opinion, especially considering that you'll likely not send it through a complete cycle each and every single day. Recharging the Jackery Explorer 500. The Jackery Explorer 500 can be recharged in three different ways, 120 volt standard household outlet, car charger, or solar. Charging input is limited to 3.5 amps of DC current, but will change depending on how many volts are pushing those amps. Let's talk about that. Charging by 120 volt wall outlet. Charging by your standard household 120 volt wall outlet will be the fastest way to charge. Plug it in and it will charge at a little over 80 watts. It can charge at 80 watts because the AC to DC adapter is pushing those 3.5 amps at about 25 volts. This will allow the unit to charge from 0 to 100% in about 7.5 hours. Charging by 12 volt car adapter. Charging by the 12 volt car adapter will charge at about 45 watts. It charges at 45 watts because whenever 3.5 amps is pushed by 12 volts, the maximum amount of wattage available to charge with is 45 watts. This will allow the unit to charge from zero to 100% in about 11 and a half hours. Charging by solar panel. Using the portable suitcase style Jackery Solar Saga 100 solar panel, the Explorer 500 will charge at a max rate of about 65 watts, depending on cloud cover and sun angle, of course. It charges at 65 watts because when this panel is performing optimally, it's operating at about 18 volts. When 3.5 amps is being pushed by 18 volts, the maximum amount of wattage available to charge with is 65 watts. Now, according to the user manual, the Explorer 500 will charge from the 100 watt solar panel in about 16 hours but I have a pretty strong feeling and a little bit of math on my side that tells me that as long as full sun is available and you keep the solar panel angled towards the sun, the unit will charge from zero to 100 real quick. The unit will charge from zero to 100% closer to the nine hour ballpark. Charging with non-Jackery solar panels. Now, if you don't need the added portability of the Jackery Solar Saga solar panel, but do want the benefits of the Explorer 500, it's totally possible to charge the Explorer 500 with other solar panels, even rigid ones. You'll just need an MC4 to Anderson connector adapter and a compatible solar panel. To find a compatible non-Jackery solar panel, you'll simply be looking for a panel that has similar specs as the Jackery Solar Saga. For the Solar Saga 100 panel, it has these stats. So you'll just be looking for an alternative panel with specs similar to these. I've got some suitable alternatives in the blog post, which you can find in the description below. Is the Jackery Explorer 500 right for you? Now, all in all, I really like the Jackery Explorer 500. I really like the fact that there's really only one input charging port for no matter which power input you plan on using. I like that the inverter is a pure sine wave inverter, and I like that all of the cables to get up and running are included. And I really like the fact that you could couple this with the Solar Saga panel, and it's truly a really portable plug and play system. When I unboxed this for the first time off camera, I'll admit I didn't read any of the directions, but was able to get it up and running within about 10 seconds. It's incredibly straightforward. Having 40 amp hours of usable battery capacity, a charge controller, an inverter, and plugs in a unit that's about the same size as a 12 pack of delicious summer shandy is honestly pretty impressive. Now, that's all the positives for this unit. How about some negatives? Now, truly, I don't really have many negatives, but I feel like I had to find something. So there's a little flashlight on the side of it, which is a little cheesy in my opinion, but whatever. I suppose if you lose like your headlamp, there's a much better chance of being able to find the Jacker unit, click on the light, and then look for your actually useful headlamp. But let's be real here. Nobody is buying this for a flashlight. But the Explorer 500 isn't for everybody. Like with everything else in the mobile electric world, there are very few one-size-fits-all items. And here's a few things to consider that might mean that the Explorer 500 is not a good fit for your needs. If you need to power items that are more powerful than the 500 watt inverter can handle, you'll likely be unhappy with the performance of this unit. If you want the system to be expandable in the future, the Explorer 500 is unable to expand to handle bigger power demands or faster charging from more solar. And finally, if you plan on regularly using more than 30 to 35 amp hours per day, you will likely be unhappy with this unit. For example, this unit would never work for Stephanie and me on our normal work days. Between the coffee maker, the 4G booster, Wi-Fi hotspots, lights, fans, and two high-powered laptops, we historically use about 300 amp hours of battery capacity during our normal workday on the road. It would be unreasonable to suggest that this unit would work for our high energy demands. But if we're taking a trip that's not in our van where we've got the huge electrical setup anyway, we're definitely taking 
taking this along because it would be fantastic for just answering some emails in the morning, you know, a few hours of light work here and there, uh, charging drones, batteries, all that kind of stuff. So if you aren't regularly trying to work from the road, putting in those 12 hour days on a laptop and you don't need near unlimited power available to you through an expandable multi-thousand dollar DIY setup, I could really see this as being a great fit. Ultimately though, I highly recommend running a power audit to find out exactly how much power you can anticipate using on a day-to-day -day basis. Here's a walkthrough for that. I appreciate you coming to check out this video and if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up for me. Leave any questions you've got in the comments below and subscribe if you want to be notified when I make more videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next video.